Well, the good coach has somewhat taken leave of his senses and asked me to do a video while he takes a break, so I thought, fuck it, why not? Spread that demonetization around. Share the love a little bit. So it would seem that the new narrative being peddled by every civic nationalist party in the UK is the American notion of unbridled free speech being somehow fundamental to healing our fractured nation and stopping those evil social justice warriors in their track and also magically stopping the brown beardy man in his pyjamas from cutting your head off for criticising his barbarous beliefs. We've actually got to the point where UKIP now have enshrined it in the key points of their manifesto. Now I'm not saying that was done to appease the influx of liberal e celebs and the great free speech martyr St Dankula, but let's face it, it probably was. Now don't get me wrong here, I don't believe criticism of religion or race should be criminalised. In fact, Catholicism can benefit greatly from listening to some criticism from actual Catholics and moving away from the retarded, liberal, modernist, socialist path that it has been happily skipping down. But that's not to say that freedom of speech is as useful or as beneficial as it is being made out to be. Now, the notion of a free market of ideas might be useful if people weren't so fucking retarded. I mean, you can argue until the cows come home that communism is as welcome on the earth as space aids, and that feminism has turned millions of women into miserable STD factories that slosh when they walk. Or you can even argue that men of action have been replaced by internet intellectuals with too much time, money and estrogen on their hands. And it will make not the blindest bit of difference. Even in the free speech utopia of America, college tours by right-wing traditionalist figures and Milo Yiannopoulos have been met by violent protests and interruptions. Antifa and Black Lives Matter are still prominent across campuses, across both the UK and the United States. And so what changed from these bold expressions of free speech and anti-collectivism? Well, one result is that you now have more disenfranchised young white men who are secluding themselves from society and becoming MGTOWs, as a realisation dawns that trying to dissuade these people with big words is something akin to trying to kill a leopard with your flaccid penis in one hand and a copy of the Republic in the other. And this leaves the free speech extremists, the free speech warriors or advocates or whatever they're calling themselves these days, with an uncomfortable question. Do they allow these opposing people to speak and brainwash the next generation under the ridiculous premise that every idea has the right to be heard, just so they can cunt someone off on Twitter and not get nicked for it? Or do they do the sensible thing and silence them? Use the weight of the law to prevent damaging ideas and the influence of multi-millionaires of a certain ethnic extraction from warping the next generation of doctors, lawyers and eventually politicians into the twisted parodies of morality that we can already begin to see emerge from these institutions. And this is just higher academia. Perhaps you prefer just to let the individual make terrible choices and suffer the consequences. You know, allow the schools to teach your children that there are more genders in the spectrum than there are shekels in George Soros's bank account. Then at age 11, allow some unscrupulous doctor that has been shat out of one of these institutions to pump them full of artificial hormones so that they can be butchered and have their cock turns inside out into something resembling a punch lasagna until one day the realisation that they are some Frankenstein amalgam of male and female dawns on them and they join the 46% of transgenders who take their own life. Is that the compassionate thing to do? Is their individuality still worth protecting and lionising under the notion of free speech in the individual? But it's okay, because you can mock it on social media without having to go to jail for it. I mean, it's not like the people behind this insidious propaganda have more money and influence than you ever will, and not like they'll use it to ensure that there will always be more people on their side than yours. You will be free to stand at Speaker's Corner and shout about the origins of this propaganda, whilst paid antifa degenerates shout louder and drown you out. And as for the free marketplace of ideas, well, that's also all well and good until you end up with discussions about whether incest is wrong and whether paedophilia is inherently harmful. And at least we know the answer to the second one now. The leader of the UKIP liberalists told me that it depends on the child. And you can claim that this desire to question absolutely fucking everything is throwing off the shackles of the church and traditional societal morality as much as you like. 
Question everything, because that is your inalienable right as an individual to do so. Assume that living in a perpetual moral grey spot makes you a free-thinking intellect, but often the truth is far more simple. For example, the question, is paedophilia wrong? The answer is yes. Why? Because it fucking is, and it does not require a two-hour debate with peer-reviewed studies and big words and metric fucktons of philosophy speak to figure that fucking out. There is such a thing as right and wrong, and the answer does not always have to lie in between. And if only sifts deal in absolutes, then call me Darth fucking Adolf, because some things are absolutely right and others are absolutely wrong. No amount of debate or free discussion will change that. So where do you draw the line? Allow criticism of some things and not others? Well, it's not free speech anymore. Do you allow the Catholic Herald to feature an Im image of a murdered fetus on his front page? But censor the image of an eight-year-old drag queen on some LGBT Slaneshi rag? Do you live to the ideals of democracy like Ireland and allow a vote to repeal the Eighth Amendment, which prevented abortion in only the most extreme circumstances? A vote that they passed, of course. Because after all, when the Irish government inevitably imports third world savages to replace its mysteriously declining population, safe, legal and rare, yeah, alright, at least you'll be able to criticise said savages, until they murder you for it, of course, but, you know, law and order, that's only for fascists. My point is, if you stand for free speech, you have to draw a big fuck-off Maginot line, which will ultimately defeat the point of it in the first place. And of course I'm biased, both politically and religiously. Everyone is. We are human after all. Well, most of us are anyway. And you can see this bias from even the most stoic free speech warriors. In the UK, Tommy Robinson went to prison for, for daring to criticise Islam. No, he didn't. That's not what actually happened. But that's a whole different topic entirely. That's the narrative we're being fed. And then you have National Action, a far-right group of LARPers that has been declared a terrorist organisation by the same fucking government which has dropped an investigation into a hate preacher's wife raising funds for ISIS. Oh, and this evil Nazi organisation has killed precisely zero people, and all of those that have been arrested for being a member of it have been remanded in custody, and they will go to prison, probably for quite a long time. Now where are the protests? Where are the speeches at Speaker's Corner or the GoFundMes for them? This is why the third position exists. Or you can abandon this pathological fear of state intervention and the obsession with the right of the individual to fuck themselves up so badly that they be become gibbering suicidal monstrosities. You can maybe admit that societal norms exist for a reason and that reason can be as simple as because they fucking work. And you know, you can actually do something about it, instead of pretending that debate and discussion is the same as actual political action, or that it can in any way stop or reverse the same trends that many of these intellectuals speak against. Or you can actually push for political action which deals with these issues, rather than merely giving you the freedom just to bitch about it. Or is that too much like hard work? Maybe that's not Patreon friendly enough. It seems the modern concept of freedom is just some grand illusion that secular society has used to replace faith in God. And I don't usually like quoting Orwell, but his works are quite entertaining providing they're not taken as a literal prophecy. But a quote I remember from 1984 is the party line, Freedom is slavery. And it's bang on but not for the reasons all well meant. Our obsession with freedom has left us slaves to our own desires, liberated only from morality and the societal conventions which founded the West in the first place. And until we acknowledge that, and stop flogging the dead horse of liberalism, things are only going to get worse. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed my fascistic ramblings on this matter, and thanks again to Coach for hosting this video.